Hey everybody, it's David R. Becker again from Becker Art. <laughs> oh, what a day. <laughs> welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome to our donkey painting we're going to be doing today. Um, welcome, and um, I have to let you know right now that we really screwed up this one. Um, there's a lot of things that are, are going to be wrong with this one. And let me show you, um, uh, when I first picked this one, it was, um, I don't know why I picked it, because <laughs> there's so many changes you have to do on it. But maybe that's the reason I, um, <laughs> in the end, found out that I should be doing um, so many different things from it. Anyways, welcome, guys. And um, today's beer is a Belgian beer. I don't know how to pronounce this. La Chaffe, maybe? <laughs> but it is a blonde ale. It is a Belgian golden blonde ale. And so let's just open this up real quick and see how it tastes and um it's a, just to let you know um i did the painting already and um wow it is a it's a tough one guys um this one you're gonna have to change a lot of stuff about it but that's a good um maybe that's a good thing and um cheers everybody to the the belgian ale okay that's a little bitter for me I'm going to give it a, um, a nine. It's not bad. It has a little bit of bitter aftertaste, but not bad. Not bad for um, wheat ale. So I'm going to give this about a nine. It's good. It's just got a little bit of a um, bitter taste at the end. All right, let's go. And so let me just show you what I did. <laughs> just real quickly. Here's what we did. And um, uh, yeah, it's okay. Um, but not what at all. We, ch I changed a million things in it and, um, let me show you, I'm going to change it even more because I was telling everybody in class, um, when I, when we got done with this, I'll show you all the reasons why I want to change a lot of things I did and, um, why we're turning a square picture and changing it completely around. Um, well, I'll let you know that in a second. So first off for all you newcomers, um, if you want to go to my website to find out anything we're doing, um, that's where you go. Um, I go to my website and everything that we're painting on Thursday nights are there. And also when I do workshops and everything, all the information is right there at my website at beckerart.net or davidrbecker.com. Go to my supplies. Here are the supplies. I put them up here just for a little bit so you can see what I'm using. I'm not using any maskoid today, which I probably should, but I'm not going to. And my brushes, paper is the same, and um, my Holbein colors. I'll just get up there. If you want to come back to that, you can always um, go back to that. Here is the big problem we had, okay? Let me just talk about this a little bit. So here is the picture, right? The picture, um, watch how many things there are wrong with this picture. Um, when I, what I did is I changed a lot of it around. And so if you look, what I did is I went from this and I did a bunch of Photoshop to it this afternoon when I got back because if you do it like this, look at how small this horse looks and look how it's divided into four columns up and down and, and the painting is right in half. And I was also told by my instructor that if you do a painting with, with oddity in it, like something that's odd about the picture, this big mound right here is just very odd. Like, what is that? Why is there a big mound? It just looks funny when we're painting it because it's like, it's, it can't be explained. It's kind of weird and kind of a funny thing that you wanna, you don't wanna explain things in your picture that you have to tell people what it is about. They just have to look at it and go, oh yeah, that's that and that's that. If it's odd and it's unexplainable, you can't paint that. It's just hard to um, do that because it's not a photograph and we are doing big areas. And also this triangle, see this triangle right in this corner? Very bad composition element. It never put a triangle in a corner. It's just not a good element. So this is what I did. I made the, um, the donkey bigger. So now he's above this. And so uh, he's a little bit bigger than half. So I made it so that in my drawing too, I'll show you later, I made it a little bit bigger so that he is, he's the center of interest and he's not down in his left-hand corner and divided in half as a picture, right? So I did that. And so I will, I will post this image right here on my website as the picture that you're gonna use instead of this one. I will do that tomorrow uh, probably, or after I get done with this, um, just so that use this picture instead of this one, because it really, you need to do, you need to change it up. Um, even the people that changed it, um, there's a couple of people in class who had changed it and actually Joyce changed it and she may be watching and, um, but she did a great job by making it and actually gave me an idea of making the horse, the horse, the donkey bigger. And we put it above this area, making it less, more than half. And so that you don't cut the picture in half. And then here's the value study. 
to show you which is light and darks. And you know, here the, the lights were all on the outer edge. The light was in this corner, and which is a triangle, terrible. Um, the light was on top of the um, donkey and that's about it. And then the colored things. And this is so separated that you kind of didn't know. I mean, yes, this is the center of interest, the donkey, but it's not, it's almost like two paintings in one cut in half. So that's what we did. We changed it up. And so there you have it. And I will, I will post this image on my website as the picture to paint and not don't use this one. It's just don't use this one. This is not a good composition. Sorry about that. Sometimes I <laughs> learn myself, you know, it's, it's weird when you're actually looking for pictures and you kind of see what you have. And um, so here's what I painted. What I did is I didn't make it um, square for one, but as I'm going along, I was doing a lot of different things. I had the triangle in the corner. I rubbed this all out. I didn't know what to do with this, make it a wall or make it that brown thing. It all came about as I'm going along. And that's not how you paint watercolors. You need to know what you're doing at all, right from the get go. You need to make a value study or know that the picture is good. That's why we do value studies. That's why I give you the black and white. And, um, but usually you should, and look at, I mean, look at how small this guy looks like a little, little horse or little, um, dog here with skinny legs. <laughs> I mean, he's so small looking here. And if it's about the, um, donkey, then bring them up. And so here you can tell what I did. I brought them up and I didn't make them so small. I did put a post in here um, to tie them down, which I will do again in my drawing. You'll see. So in my drawing, I made him a lot bigger, a lot bigger, right? I put the post and I put a little bucket in here again to have a drink of water. And I made this the wall, like a wall instead of that, that mound of dirt that I'm not even sure. And I made this a window and not just a black hole. Things that just give it more of a story and make it a little more, you know, this is not very good. <laughs> and I mean, look at this, this big round and I just made it totally round. So you can see, I also make mistakes and, but you'll learn from them. That's the, I was telling the class, it's like, it's amazing. I actually almost love the class because we learn so much more when we make mistakes <laughs> and we learn what about, because if we just did it well and we just did it right from the get go, hey, we wouldn't learn anything. We just do the picture the way it was, right? But here we have to actually do something to the picture to make it better than what it is, the photograph. The, the photograph is okay, but it needs to be better. You know, it's like, it can't be divided in half like that. It can't be, and the colors on this one, um, it got kind of drab. I wanted to make it all warm. You know, so I'm gonna use more orange, not so much brown, and um, you know, just kind of build up a little bit of the color so that it is. I do want to make it all warm. This is a, this is a um, I kind of want to go on the one side of the color wheel from yellows to oranges to reds. I want to stick in there, and I can still put the green in because that's complement of red. So mostly it'll be reddish orange, and then we'll go with some greens and stuff, and maybe even a, a little um, you know um, turquoise for the for the blanket that he's got on him. All right, so let's get going here. We got a lot of work to do. <laughs> so here's how I changed it. And again, sorry about that, but this, sometimes you have to do that. And actually you learn that way a lot. Hey Tina, you like the label on the beer? Thanks. <laughs> it's actually not bad beer. It's a nine. Again, I'm not a real fan of, it's, it's also 8% alcohol, this, this bottle. <laughs> and so um, if I'm on the floor at the end of the workshop or at the end of this demo, um, wake me up. <laughs> Yell, well, that, it's hard to do that, huh? <laughs> Not bad, not bad, but still a nine, not a 10, not 11. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Barbie. Hey, Tina. Hey, Paula, Kathy, Marianne, Pam, and Barbara. Thanks for coming by. Let's see. Um, let's get the try on. So there's 23 of you. Thanks for coming by, boy. And so let's get going here. And again, we're going to do our lights to dark like we always do. And even though there's not much dark in here, if you look at the right up here, what is, what is the light is the flowers and his top of his um, the blanket and the saddle and then around the wall and the bottom here. That's the only light things. And so let's put them in right away. Let's put in our pink flowers right away. I think a little red, a little bit of um, white and actually pink. And I'm just gonna dab them in there and kind of put in, put in my flowers. And I, like I did in class, I kind of um, melded a, together it all and let the let the um, darks create them. But this time what I want to do is just be a little bit more forceful with the knowing exactly which flowers are where, because again, this became just one big mound of white and dark. And so again, not great, not a great, um, you know, that, that one's being turned over. You know, that's, you know, every once in a while you do one, that's not that great and that's okay. 
And actually you learn so much more from that. Let me tell you, you really learn a lot when you make mistakes or you don't know why. And then we critiqued it in class. We figured it out. And I took it home and we looked at it some more and then some more. <laughs> and I decided, okay, this has got to change. We've got to change this and this and because of this and because of that. And because of the being split in half and the donkey being so small and all that kind of stuff. So it's all, it's all good. You know, it's all good. I never, I'm never mad if I don't do something um, bad. Actually, I'm happy when I do something that's not great because then I really learn something compared to just doing the painting and getting done with it. Hey, you don't really learn. You just do it, right? Here you're learning. We'll learn. Learn from your mistakes. I keep the top of the, um, top of the Seattle, Seattle, <laughs> the top of the saddle white. And boy, it is hot in here again today. I had the air conditioning on for a little bit, but never gets, <laughs> never gets cool enough. Uh oh, is that the train coming? I think I'm gonna hear the train in a second. Right about. Nope, he must have just started out. He's at the station, and so he doesn't blow his horn when he right away. I'll be in about 15 or 20 minutes, so I'll come back again, because they're going the other way. Now the bottom of the bottom of the donkey, we're making him nice and warm there. And you notice I'm using all warm. I'm, I'm basically making this all a warm colored um, piece. I don't want any cools in here. I'm not sh um, I just want to try to keep it on the one side of the color wheel. It's a way of doing things that you can do. You don't always have to go on with um, both sides and use compliments. Though I will be using compliments. I put green in here, so green and red. But I'm keeping it mostly all warm. Excuse me. And that's a you know it's a more limited palette, but that's okay. You can do that. And so we'll put that in there. And now the ground is light, but I just want to keep it white. Some of it I'll keep white, but some of it in this area, I'm going to spatter. And I did that in class too. Spattered a little bit of color in there and make it, you know, textury. So I'm just taking my brush, tapping it on my finger and throwing it across, giving, giving it pattern and texture. And again, for anybody new, and I don't think I see anybody new on chatting, but if you're new that you're not chatting, um, please chat and um, ask questions. I'll look up every once in a while and I will try to answer whatever I can and um, I'll go from there. I'll put a little bit of um, texture on here, a little texture in the, up in here too, why not? You know, it's going to be darker. This I made a window, you see I, did, I made a window instead of just this black hole that's there. Uh, I don't know where this is taken and you know, I didn't put the old picture up there um, because I don't want you to see what, well, You'll see it anyway. See, <laughs> you have the picture that you have already that you took down, but I don't want you to use that one. Do not use that one. That one is not is not a good, got not a good composition. I've been looking for also. I've been looking for a storefront window where you can see the reflection in the window and what's inside the building. It's a hard thing to find. If somebody finds a, a royalty free image like that, please send it my way, and we can paint it. I've just been looking for something like that. I will make some of this lighter than the black hole that it is, <laughs> just because um, it's nice to have a little bit of light up here and um, instead of just a black hole. So that's pretty much my light area, right? I'm just gonna go in here and get my light area. It's nice and messy because those light areas are not defining anything yet. They're just light, they're just a color. I colored them. I'm coloring them and putting a little bit in there and they're going to turn really light. They're going to be really, really light. What is the palette you are using? I would love to have one like it. This palette right here, the white palette is just a, you can get them anywhere. They're a very cheap palette um, that they, um, all the companies have a palette like this. Uh, it's, um, this one happens to be from Holbein. You can go to probably like a, um, uh, let's see, Vermont Art Supply, I think sells them. Um, but it, like I said, it is a, a standard type palette, um, plastic palette, which is um, okay. But they're, you know, they're basically have a lid, you know, they have a lid and I can use the inside you can use for that and um, has a little bust. Um, funny that you mentioned that um, about the palette because I just yesterday I am building my own palette and um, um, it's going to be made of metal and it'll have um, a surface that's um, white. And um, so it'll be interesting to see. Um, I'm just talking right now. I'm sending out um, 
places to tin companies that will make this tin uh, for me. It's a tin pallet. And you know, so we'll see how it works out. I just got answer word back. And so I'm going to have to meet with these people. But come hopefully in the next, you know, next year. Probably in the, by the beginning of next year, I'll be probably be having a palette, my own palette, the Becker Art palette, that you will love. You will love this palette because I'm making it for myself. <laughs> and I've always hated these palettes um, because you cannot remove this color out of there. And they're very, you know, cheap plastic and um, they're throwaways. And basically, I constantly just have to take this color out and put it into the next palette, you know, that you get. But that's what it is. All right. So enough about that. Um, we're going to now do our darks because this is my lights. I have all my lights. So let's go in there, do the background, and just get my big areas of dark. Middle tone areas. Again, middle tones first. Thanks, Mary. Um, this is a, I love this subject matter, too. Um, everybody likes donkeys doing it. I'm not sure why. It's one of those things... I always sold all my donkeys, all my pig paintings and donkey paintings, certain animals that you do with paintings of and they and they really sell really well. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of light red. This is called light red, it's kind of a burnt orange. And I'm not gonna make it as dark as I did this afternoon, um, but I am gonna put all kinds of colors in there. Not just the one color orange. I'm gonna put a little bit of a lizard in there. I will go around the window this time. And um, again, putting it dark, putting it nice and dark. Here, a little bit of brown, a little bit of brown. And um, I put a little couple of flowers in this corner too, just because I felt it needed it. Because there's a wall there now, and I just want to make sure. Now, the top of the of the donkey will be darker or lighter, and so I can make it right up to there, go darker, kind of go around. Be careful. I mean, this is important. You could use masking fluid if you want. I don't highly recommend it but if you need to do it so you can get that edge perfect then go ahead always whatever it takes for you to make a nice um clean clean drawing and painting here i'm going around the window you notice how it's all warm maybe put some yellow in there too what the heck put some yellow and just flood, flood all that beautiful color in there beautiful warm colors Nothing wrong with beautiful warm colors and just not always having to have gray colors in it too. So I decided just to try it this way this week. Just want to try, you know, you never know. I could have just used all grays and blues and then do the foreground warm. Nah, you always got to try something different. I want to try things differently and see how things work out. And again, if it's a mistake, hey, you learned that never to do that again. <laughs> Always remember, you're you're trying to learn things, and it's not about doing a beautiful painting. It's about learning stuff. This is these these are not for you to do a painting just to make a painting. These are for you to learn something about watercolor, and hopefully, then when you go on to your own paintings, they'll get better and better. That's what it's about. It's not about making a beautiful picture of a donkey. You know, <laughs> it's it's pretty much doing a beautiful picture that hopefully would be a beautiful picture, but more or less. And more than that is that you want to learn something. You want to learn something about, you know, watercolor so that when you do your own painting style, your own painting subject matter, then it becomes really what you want it to be. And so here I'm just going to put that. And I really shouldn't have gone around it. You know, the donkey is dark, so why would I go against it, right? See that? I could just go right into it. Now that it's done, it's done. But I could just go right into there. I don't need to go around the donkey. The donkey is a darker color. The only part that is a little bit lighter is right here, his belly. And so I'll do that. I'll stay away from that. But here, just go right through his legs. You don't need to go around. You got to make that a little bit wet so it's... Look at that nice red, warm red. Isn't that great? I will go right in here and I will go over his tail now because it is going to be darker. And I'm going to put a little bit of lavender in there. What the heck? Just a little gray. Just to push it back a little bit. And then maybe some really bright red over that. I'm going to stop it right here. That's where the wall starts. I can go right here. I'm going to make that to the edge only because I'm going to maybe make it a little light trim over that. Like a little light um, rim lighting on there. See, I'm going over his legs. His legs will be darker. So you just go right over his legs. Do not go around certain things because then it looks odd that you have to go right to it. The people that paint hyperrealism, they do go right to the edge and they don't go into these other areas because they can't. I mean, they have to make it so picture perfect that they um, they do every little piece, almost like a puzzle, basically. 
So then the pail will be light, and so I'll go around that. This stump, or this trunk, or whatever, that this post, not, not trunk, post. Um, I'll put a little dark, there's a little dark down here, so let's put some of that in there. Any questions? Yeah, the, um, the palette will be awesome. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be an awesome palette. If I get it made, manufactured, I gotta, I'm figuring, figuring out costs and stuff and, and if they can actually make it the way I want it. Um, so we'll be talking to them. Um, I just mailed out images cause I actually have a prototype that I made and, um, I've seen, I've shown a couple of people the prototype and it's already kind of been made. I mean, you've seen tin palettes already, but they're mostly for small pan colors. I want to make them for big, big colors big areas big pans now this is look how terrible that looks it's just one color i mean where's where's the yellow where's the other colors in there where's the other floating color let's get some of that in there let's get some dark color in there too some how about some violet in there some dark violet it is my dark area and i almost wish i would have put a little bit more orange light orange in some of these areas to bring it out the orange part of it the top of this will be the light and then maybe the side here. Then the rest will be a little bit darker. See, there's a little bit more orange. There we go. And because I don't have any other color here yet to identify, like there's no grays, it makes these colors all look kind of like, mm, well, that's okay. But um, if I start putting the dark green in there, then those will pop even more. And if I put darks in there, it'll pop also too, because right now this is my darkest dark. And so it just seems like not very, you know, it seems red, but that's about it. You know, but there's a lot of different colors in there. You'll see as we go along. And actually the donkey will be darker than that. So it looks kind of odd. You know, you're thinking, wow, that's not, that's not, that's pretty dark. And you're going to have a dark donkey in the two, but you watch, you know, this also becomes very much lighter. I am lighting a couple places here just because you can also spatter this if you wanted to do like a little bit more texture on it. Right now this looks like pretty good texture though. I'll keep it at that. Back here will be really dark and um, this will be the light that I already put there. I don't have to do anything there. Here I, and this is gonna be a shadow and I'll put the shadow in once I put the, um, the donkey's horse, the donkey's shadow in there. <laughs> I need another drink. <laughs> Cheers everybody. Cheers. <laughs> It is so hot in here. It looks like I'm sweating, right? <laughs> like I said, I am. Well, I do love winter for that reason. That this studio is so nice in the winter. Um, you can't have the, I have to get some kind of air conditioning that doesn't make any noise. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go dark here. So we pretty much got that lights and we got our middle tones, a big area of middle tones. Let's get a little bit of the colors in the saddle and then the blanket on the saddle because it's going to be a big part of it. And so might as well get it in there right now. Go in and just get some of that going. Put a little lavender in there. What the heck? Um, then there's a little bit of some of the orange in there too. Some yellow. Keeping the top part light. And then this goes down this way. There is a little bit of fringe in there. I'm keeping it just the overall values of that and now go in and decorate it with different colors this part of the saddle saddle is pretty much white so i'm going to keep that white and the front of the nose of the donkey is a little warm and so i'm just going to do it lighter light and warm and um, the back of his hind leg here has a little bit of light in it so i'm just going to take out some of that red that i put across it it's going to be still darker but that this way it'll give that part a little bit lighter than the background all right, let's go into our darks now, our dark darks. Um, that's pretty much all we have left. We have the dark green in there. They have the dark background. We have the dark donkey and um, the dark shadow underneath. So let's just do that. Any questions? Not yet. Thanks, guys. And again, sorry about the all the changes that are going to be happening to happen in this. But um, take down, like I said, I will put up the image this week or, or tonight actually I'll, what i'll do is i'll put it on there and i'll change everything so they pull down from my website pull down the image it's not in the it's not going to be in the newsletter because that that one is going to be the old one actually that link will be that link will be okay i think hmm. let me see if i can do that <laughs> i have to I have to figure out if i can do that the link to the um if it's the same link that may not be all right so let's go in here and get the darks and paint around paint around the 
whatever azalea bush it may be. Is that what they call this bush? I don't know. I'm not a great person when it comes to flowers or bushes that are flowery. Don't know what actually the names of them are. And so I'm putting a little bit of dark, hitting those little spots of pink. And this is the hard part because it is negative painting. You are basically painting two things at one time. You are painting the flower along with around what's around the background of the flower. Flowers in front, you're painting around it. You're creating another object that's next to the um, flower or the background. And sometimes you do both at the same exact time. Here I put a little bit of a little more yellow on the edges. These are leaves, basically going to be leaves. And then we'll do a really dark there. But as you notice, I'm going to be doing a lot of, I'll be also shading these light um, flowers because these are that's the lightest part of the flower but then they're gonna be shaded with the dark side and the medium side right now I'm just kind of going in there getting the background behind the flowers and it's more of a medium I'm putting down first and it's a lot of blue with some green and some yellow I never use like a pure color by itself it's rarely do you do that um, there, there are times when you maybe do it because, you know, I have a certain color that you um, really love and it works, works well by itself. Opera is usually one of those where you just basically use opera. I'm going to do this around the ear only because I want to make sure that the ear maybe has a little rim lighting on it. And um, I'm going to bleed that off into the background with a little bit of green and a little bit of that. So you, it's kind of out of focus, basically, is what you're doing. You're making things out of focus. Anytime you don't know what something is or you're trying to make it so you don't look at it, out of focus it. Make it um, so it's not identifiable what it is. Make it a soft edge. It's almost like blurring it. The camera blurs things that in the background. It's the same type of thing where you're blurring it and you don't want people to actually see it. Out of focus. Out of focus is a perfect way of doing that. Losing those edges. That's what it also is. Losing the edges. Losing it so that you don't know what the edge is, so that the edge doesn't identify itself. It doesn't identify with anything. It's just lose those edges so that it just becomes soft and blurry, blurry and out of focus. Now you can't do the whole painting out of focus because you need something to be in focus, okay? <laughs> you just um, <laughs> you need to have some things in focus. Otherwise, there's nothing about the painting. It's all out of focus. Maybe that's a good thing, though. Maybe there's, there's some kind of style you can do. Don't put anything in focus. Then you never get you never get hurt with anything. You know, it's going to be good because there's nothing in focus. All right. So here we have no soft edges. But what you could do is make some of those hard edges soft by adding a little bit of water next to them. See, I'm just going to add a little water, just pure water, and then just let some of it be soft edged. Not all of it. Just some. You can just rub in a little bit of water. Let it bleed. Let it bleed and just become soft edges. Maybe one side is dark, one side is light. Always remember the sun is coming from the top, going down. So everything in the top of everything is going to be lighter. And then as it goes around to the side, it gets darker. And then underneath is really dark, except for the belly of the of the of the donkey that has a light and it's reflecting up from the ground. It's reflecting back up into his stomach. This over here is really dark, and I'm just going to go with a really dark color, which is black, and then a little violet. Maybe a little dark blue, and I am going to make it really dark. It's kind of a, um, a purpley black blue. And um, I'm going around these edges because those are leaves. Excuse me. And uh, they're out of focus, though. So, and what I can do is I can just walk, go like this and put a little bit of um, water into them and make them out of focus, too, by letting them just bleed into the dark. I can put a little bit of red in there, too, if I feel like it. Little dots in there and I'm doing this why because I want to get the shape of this wall and that shape of that wall is also out of focus and soft edge but I can do that after I put the hard edge down and then wet it a little bit of red in there too so it kind of matches this part I'm kind of tapping a little bit to make it so that it looks underneath and that'll be the background it kind of falls into there and then I can go over this wall here a little bit with some little bit of water. Just take some clean water and then just let it bleed into this area. And so it becomes soft edged. 
and you just tap it a couple of spots here. So it's not all, all soft edges, it's not all hard edged. It's a little bit of both. On the other side here, I can do the same thing. I can make some part hard, hard edge and then soften it. Like it's a little stair step type of thing. And then I can also um, just brush across and maybe make it a little dirtier or darker. And again, that's kind of out of focus too. So you don't really can't tell what's going on there. It's a little bit of just, you know, again, losing your edges. This post will be really dark in a, in a little bit. I will put it really dark on the side. Well, let's do it right now since I've got, I'm talking about it. It's, oh, actually it's wet. No, that's okay. Let's go. Let's just do it. You're nice and dark. Get down to the pail. Go around the pail because it's in front. And then it's wet, right? And when something's wet, what do you do? You float your pigment. You know me, floating my pigment. So wet it and then float some pigment in there. Put some orange in there. Put some red in there. Put some green. That's okay. The green can reflect from the top. You hear hearing me say that, boy, you're never gonna say that much. We're gonna put the green in there. You put green right on this edge. That's okay, because green and red are complements, so it'll work. It will work. The pail itself is in the shadow, so we can give it a little bit of a gray and um, maybe make the edge light and then just put it in shadow. Connect it right into the floor of the shadow on the, on the ground. Just put it right into that. You don't need to change things up. They're all together. It's all together. And then I'm gonna go right into this shadow down here and it can be, it can be a little bit of the, everything. It can be a little bit of violet. It can be a little bit of the orange. It can be a little bit of a little red because it's on white. And when you say um, a shadow on white, it can be any color. That's like if it's if if a shadow is on red, it should be dark red. If it's on a dark, if it's on a blue, it'll be a dark blue. If it's on white, it can be any color. It can be any color you want it to be, because it's also also you, what you try to do is you look around and see what colors you have around, and then make it that kind of color. But it can be any color that's around the area. So I'm just making this shadow on the bottom here now. I'll put some dark in there, some soft in there. I'm gonna go right into the foot too, right into this hoof, not this foot. I guess like hoof, foot, hoof. And we'll go. <laughs> so let's have another drink. <laughs> Eight percent, boy, guys, this is gonna hit me big time. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Ah, okay. So we got the hoof of the horse, and um, we'll put this in there. Now this seems a little bit. Um, I need to get a little violet in there because it seems all so red and I don't have anything else besides red and orange and yellow, which is what I want, but I want a little bit of maybe like a violet just to get you away from having so much of that that you don't have anything else. A little bit of something else doesn't hurt it. Here, give it a little that. So see how that shadow works? And it's going to bleed right up into the horse and so, horse, <laughs> into the donkey. And we'll make it really dark and this is is it dry enough yes it is so let's take our small round brush and we're going to go right into the donkey and we still have plenty of time i think so we'll go really dark and maybe with some reddish color and um go right down into the into the leg right down into the wash we just made and that's going to go right into the floor we don't want any difference between where the hoof stops and the and the shadow begins it's all one thing. It's all together. And then we go up here. We're getting the edge. And make sure you have your drawing good. Um, drawing is number one. Always remember, drawing is number one. You need to have a good drawing. I don't care how you get it. We talked about that today in class to one of our new students. And I told her it's like the most important thing. I don't care how you get it on there. If you got to trace it, copy it, whatever, you need to have good drawing. The number one most important thing about um, drawing and doing the painting is the drawing of it. I can't stress that enough. If you don't have a good drawing, unless you have a style that's very sloppy and doesn't matter where you, what your style is, then, then, then okay, then it's fine. But if you are doing this type of work, you need to have good, good drawing skills. Or, like I said, get yourself a projector, get um, copy paper, transfer paper, something to make your painting look drawn well it has to be drawn well now somebody told me in the picture that the, there was a braid on the back of this um of the donkey's tail so if you want to braid it go right ahead braid it 
I'm gonna make it a little bit lighter. I'm gonna make it light on top here. I'm almost gonna keep it white on the very top there. And I will just pull out a little bit of this color. Keep it light. So I want that I want it to go around the back. And then he's got really dark thigh right here, looks like. Let's just get that in there. And then we got fringe. I'm gonna do the negative painting of the fringe. And then bottom of his belly is a little bit lighter. So let's um, shine that. Let's get that shiny. Let's get it a little bit lighter. And it's lighter than the background right now. So I'll just go across it and make my fringe and my all that other stuff in there. Keeping it lighter, his belly. Maybe make it a little orange like it's reflecting from, ab from above, from below. Lighting up his belly. It is dark right next to the... I didn't go around the fringe so much. I'm going to do that with opaque colors. Um, like right here, those little lines and a little bit of fringe right I have there. Um, we're going to keep that at um, uh, opaque. I'm just going to draw it in with opaque colors. And so here we go with the darks again. It's nice and super dark. This leg got kind of lost a little bit. You can put a little bit of other color in there too. If you feel like you want to put in like maybe a, a little bit of reflection of orange maybe on this side here, I'll do that. You know, it doesn't hurt to put color in there. He's a center of interest, so make him colorful, but dark. Mo most of them didn't get dark enough in the first wash. You need to get that first wash in there and make it super dark. Hoof, foot, oofta. <laughs> Thanks, Susan. Yeah, it's oofta, all right. <laughs> Uh, my my cousin has a horse farm or a horse a ranch I shouldn't say farm <laughs> a horse ranch up in Canada and um, I don't know how many horses it has now but he's a huge huge barn but I'm sure he's cringing right now if he's watching <laughs> I gotta I gotta get it back up there once um, next year when Holbein has their um, thing in Vermont again in Burlington Vermont I'm going back up to Canada and hopefully be able to visit him again. This year was against canceled. It would have been the last week in July. It would have been last week, um, but um, it was canceled this year. So hopefully next year we can go. I can get back to Burlington, Vermont, and do the Holbein Holbein um, workshops that they have, the day workshops, the three-hour workshops. You do a bunch of them. So there look at all these nice darks we have in there right now, right? And we're gonna put some color in there, a little orange, and right underneath, right underneath this. Um, a little darks right here just to show show the curvature of his belly going underneath this goes right into here and then he's got another leg right there it's gonna be a little bit lighter making it a little bit more orange and then we're gonna get really dark really dark on the bottom here we'll switch to a dark and you notice how again it goes right into the ground and we don't even see the difference between the ground and his hoof <laughs> Not his foot. <laughs> and so we're gonna put this in here. And there we go. There's a beautiful hoof with a nice. I wonder, do they um, they put horseshoes on donkeys? <laughs> oh, I better stop talking about donkeys and horses. Oh, cheers, everybody! Cheers. All right, and so let's go and um, let's do his face real quick. And go around his um, the bridle. I think that's what they call it. <laughs> like I said, I better show it up pretty soon <laughs> about the, the pieces of the of the horses or donkeys. And then we're gonna put the ear up this way. And then I, I'm gonna make the his mane right there. I'm just gonna keep it white, and I'll put a little color onto it later. His ear in the back, I'm going to make lighter, so it again looks different. It looks like it's farther back than the one in front. Always make things different if you want to show dimension. You know, one will be darker, one will be lighter. One will be more contrasty, one will be less contrasty. One will be soft edge, one will be hard edge. That's how you make dimension. Now his face, we're going to make nice and dark. Keeping his harness. The harness, what we'll do is we'll make it light. Even though in the picture, I think it's just as dark as the, as the donkey. But what we can do is just fake it a little bit, you know, but 
And this is a little bit more detail, so use your brush that best fits your purpose. Like if you need to use a smaller brush, that's the time. When you need to use something small to get nice drawing effect in there, then just use something small. I tend to use the same brush the whole painting a lot of times, but that's because I just feel like I can do it. But if you can't, or if you feel kind of uncomfortable with a certain brush, and you need to get it, switch it, then switch it. Don't need to um, use the whole brush, one brush for the whole painting. Nobody's watching you paint, and so nobody's gonna go, ooh, wow, he's using one paint brush. <laughs> Here we got the bucket, put a little bit of decorative on that. And um, I didn't put any green over here, so let's put some green in there really fast. Some dark in there, just around some of this foliage. And then against the, I need the light top here and against the butt of the, of the donkey. Or should I say ass of the donkey? <laughs> ass of the ass? <laughs> All right, so um, we got that dark. And here we go. Okay. Ah, there's a horn. Or oh, I think it's coming even closer. Yeah, it comes back. 7-Eleven, 7-Eleven train. There it is. <laughs> yeah, the Fox Lake is the last stop and it turns around and goes back. And so that's come before it didn't blow its horn because it stopped at a station. Now it goes back and it usually doesn't stop at the station or if it does, it still blows its horn. I took that train for a good 30 some years. I spent half my life on that darn train. <laughs> All right, so now we have all these nice azaleas or whatever they call those. Um, and then we've got the lights pretty much. And so we're at point now to get the details, the nice little details, the little textures and, and everything that makes it um, look like what it's supposed to look like. All the little details of grays and, and the pattern on the, on the donkey's blanket here. I'm going to put that all in there. You can even hear the train. Can you hear the train in a bit distance? And so then we'll go to this. So many good tips and advice in this paint along. Oh, thanks, Suze. <laughs> we're, we're trying to do something good. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't have liked it this, this afternoon. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's pretty much a difference so far, right? <laughs> I mean, it's, you can tell that this one's going to be much better. <laughs> and it always is the second time. I, I got to say, you know, if you want to do a painting um, twice, it usually goes better the second time, especially if you're trying to figure things out. And if you get things wrong, figure it out in the beginning. <laughs> and I guess as a teacher, I shouldn't be doing that, right? I shouldn't be um, having mistakes, but hey, we all do it. We all make mistakes. We all, and they're not even mistakes. They're just beautiful learning experiences. And that's the best thing about it is you, they're so good for your learning things. Learning new things is the best when you can do that. All right, now the flowers, um, actually, let's do the window real quick because there's going to be like a little bit of a dark in the window. And let's just get in there. How much time do we have left? Uh, 15 minutes? we got plenty of time. So about here. I'm going to make this a little dark in there. And I feel like it doesn't have enough texture in the background. So what we can do later on is also um, spatter it, um, give it some more texture in certain areas because it's kind of like a messy adobe type of wall. And so I, I didn't do it at the first, but you can always do it in, in the end too. You don't have to always do it at a certain time. Like it doesn't have to be all the time that you get it right at a certain you know level in the beginning. You can also do it at the end, it's okay. A little bit of dark underneath the window. It's kind of a dark, weird color though. And then this itself is in the shadow, so we can't make that light as light it is, as it is. But I'm gonna wait till it dries because otherwise, it will it'll be. Well, let's, let's see. I'm gonna make it a lavender type of color, and um, yeah, I'm gonna have to wait till it dries because I'm gonna get a little bit of light. 
And this voile here seems a little bright, and this seems a little bright, but um, I'd like to get a little bit more texture in here. Let's make that darker. Let's make this come across. Inside the pail will be dark, right? I'll have inside the pail. You can see a little bit inside the pail, so we'll just do like that. And when you're making stuff up, that's where your um, it comes in handy to have like the internet. And if you need to find something that looks like something, just, you know, or even on your phones nowadays, you can talk to your phone and say, hey, show me a picture of so-and-so, and it'll actually show you a picture of that. And that, that's what you want to do. I mean, sometimes you need a picture of it and um, do that. We have all this technology now that can help you. And I'm actually sweating. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm actually sweating here. <laughs> I can see why they keep, like, television studios really cool so that you don't look like you're sweating up a storm. <laughs> but... We don't have a big studio here. <laughs> it's just my studio. All right, let's take a small brush here and get our little, get our little um, flowers in here. So I'm gonna take them red and I will do the dark side. So I was talking to one of the students here, I know a new student about know where your light source is and the light source is from the top going down. So all these flowers will have a top part that's lighter than the bottom part or the bottom part can be a little bit more red and then it could be a center also to it, but usually the bottom parts will be the darker parts, right? And so the bottom part right here, leave the top part um, here alone, leave that alone. But then the next thing you can do negative painting of the next leaf, the next petal, I mean, um, keeping that light and then dark dark around the top part of it. Always the bottom part of the, of the petal. And I'm just using red, excuse me, red. And... Um, there we go. And again, please tell um, if you have if you have a club and you I really don't have that many workshops this year as I have done in the past because of COVID and stuff. They allowed me to cancel, and it takes about a year or two to get your back into the swing of things. And um, so next year we'll probably be much better off again. Um, but this year was kind of short um, the schedule, so. If you have a cl art club that wants me to do it instantly, I can do that too. And um, but I am getting a bunch of stuff done. I must say, like I said, like I'm building on my palette. I will be bringing out a sketchbook. Hopefully, I still got to get that photographed. I got it written. I just have I'm bringing out a sketchbook to teach you how to sketch from your mind's eye. And the palette will be fun. I'm only, again, I'm doing a palette for myself basically, but I know you guys, you guys are going to want it, so I figure I might as well figure out how much it's going to cost to make a bunch of them. And um, it's going to be a great palette. It's finally a palette that I'm going to love. I just do not like these these white palettes because they're just they're so cheap, and they just break, and they, they, you can't change colors on them. And so you're going to love it. And the size is going to be great, and everything about it is going to be great. And let's see. Put this in here. I'm doing fringes. I'm doing all the little details, all the little things that make it beautiful. I'll put a little shadow underneath the thing here, too, to make it look like it's a little bit different. Like there's different levels in the window itself. And there's shadows in the window. And then again, we have to do the outer edge. I can't keep that light because I can't keep it white because it's not. It's in the shadow. This whole window is in the shadow, so I cannot put white in there. Again, it's it's behind. It's in it's in the shadow. So we'll put that like that. And let's get a little bit darker on the donkey himself to get a little bit a little bit of um, like underneath here, a little darker. Go around the harness again. And we'll keep some of this soft edged. I like that. Okay, now let's get the rigger brushes for lines. I need some lines in here. And actually, I also need some darker darks inside this area because the background is so dark back here. See how the background is? So I'm going to need some spots to be like they're, like you can see through this. Because not all of this is going to be so um, full with foliage. You're going to see through some of this and see the background. So let's get some a little bit more dark in there darker areas 
It's just another dimension, another dimension to show farther back than just two dimension, like a light and a dark. This is a light, medium, and a dark. And so I can go way back, way back in there. It's all about dimension and composition, right? I mean, that's what it is. And so you gotta get that all together as one. You gotta do the top of the head again. Make his eyes a little bit darker. Nose, shadow on his harness. Let's get the, the nice darks in the sa saddle. This is the most important part right here, the saddle. I mean, it's, it makes what makes the painting look so cool. There's a lot of neat things in this saddle. A lot of neat um, decorative colors. I'll take a little bit of blue now and put it in there. A little bit of turquoise. There's a lot of turquoise in the south, right, where these donkeys are in wherever this donkey comes from. <laughs> Let's go across this way. We'll make checkerboard. Maybe a little bit of turquoise in here. Maybe his harness is a little turquoise. Maybe the fringe. I'll now do the fringe. Oh, I forgot to put right over here also for the flowers themselves, the darker parts of the flowers. The underside, right? The underside is a little bit darker. I can take some pure red in here too. It makes the pinks a little bit pop forward. Flowers on the left, small clumped more color. Oh, thanks, Bill. You just, I just did it. Oh, thanks. Thanks for that. I would have looked up and thanks for that. Just saw it before you did, just right before you mentioned it. And then some of this seems really, really light. And so I'm going to do some, I'm going to do a bunch of lines first. Like this is going to be bricks in here. So I'm going to put some. Like I'm going to fake some brick, brickwork in here and then, you know, make it look like it's brickwork, but you don't want to make it really too contrast or too detailed, just enough to show that, oh yeah, there's a little brick in there. It's not just a wall. It's a brick wall and you have these lines, boom, and there'd be another one right, right here. This would be right about there. And then see, just a little thing like that will make um, the wall look so much more real. You know, like it's it's a real wall and it's just made with bricks. And I can tap it a little bit here. Here we got the handle on here. And this is the detail part, but it needs it. It needs detail too. Not only does it need um, your big areas, but there's a time and place where you got to do the small stuff, the detail stuff. It's usually at the end, but when you, you have to do it. You have to get in there and just really, um, especially around the center of interest, like here I'm going to do white. For the fringe, I'm just gonna put it in there opaquely. Opaquely, is that a word? <laughs> opaquely. <laughs> and so we're gonna go through here and um, all right. How much more time do we have here? Oh, we got like seven more minutes, eight more minutes. So it goes into more red down here and this little puffy things here down on the bottom. Pink in there too. Orange, maybe some orange, some yellow. How about some yellow? We didn't use much bright yellow. Let's use some bright yellow down here. This little thing, I'm not sure what that is. I could never figure out what this thing is in the back that falls in the back here. Don't know what that is. Doesn't really matter, I don't think. Now the rope, I can make dark or light. I think I'm gonna try to dark first. Just gonna make the rope coming down from his harness right here and just one swipe over to the over to the post. And then once it gets to the post, it gets wrapped, and then there's it's gonna be a little bit of the rope hanging there. And then I'm gonna go to white and like it'll reflect a little bit of the white in there. Alright. Maybe we can even put a little white on the rope here, just like it hit the light a little bit. Maybe the pail has a little bit of light on the edges. How about his hoof? Does his hoof have a little light? No, it's in the shadow. Why would it have that? <laughs> I don't even think. I think the rest thing I'm going to do is look at it in the... I think I need texture. I need some more texture in the background. And um, this needs to be darker over here, I think. A couple of spots over here, and I think we'll be done. <laughs> I keep on reading your post right after I do it. <laughs> Sorry about that, Pamela. 
Good, uh, though. Thanks for mentioning those things, though, because a lot of times I wouldn't have looked if I didn't remember it. This is the top of the wall, so let me get a couple. It's a little bit darker. And I'm going to spatter. I'm going to go spatter crazy here now for the light areas. I'm going to stand up for this. Sorry, guys. I'm going to stand up because I'm going to spatter the heck out of this thing. I'm going to take um, a lot of paint, a little bit of orange, and I'm going to get this thing messy. I mean, this has got to be messy, right? And we got to do some nice messiness to it. Get some texture in there. You can use a toothbrush. You can get the texture. A little bit of this. Get a little bit more texture on the ground because this ground is not solid it's not a solid ground so i'm taking a little bit of this and i just even the wall up there I, it's just too too perfect this wall has got to have some you know messiness to it just and if it gets too messy like that then you can just rub it off real lightly and how about this this could have like little dots of like um pink all right we can definitely have, definitely have pink spots in there right Ooh, look at that. Isn't that nice? A little bit of spots on there. Yeah, that didn't get dark enough, so let's get a little bit dark with that. Oh my God, my palette and my screen now is a completely disaster. Let's see. Well, this is wet, so. You're not gonna ruin it, don't worry. You're not gonna ruin it, you're just if you, if you see a spot that's a little bit too much, just take paper towel, dab it lightly, and you, you know, it's just enough to make it look more textury. I mean, this is like a messy area. You don't want to make it super shiny, right? It's not like somebody went there and cleaned it. I want texture, texture, texture. All right, and so I think that is pretty much going to be it, guys. Let me just do a couple more things here. We got three more minutes. I'm just going to go over here and do a really dark, dark... With my little, with the, I don't know what they call this brush. It's a real long, it's almost like a rigger, but really long. And put that in there. A little shadow. I'm trying to mess it up a little bit. It just looks so clean. It looks so too, too perfect. This is a scene that shouldn't look perfect. I'm just going to sweep over it a little bit. One more dark and it's done. Oh, one more second, one more second. Go back here underneath this parent. And then a little bit more shadow on here. There we go. All right. So done. Let me take the tape off. Unless you see something. <laughs> now, now's the time to say something. Yeah, now I'm looking. And I'm taking the tape off. So once you get the tape off, you're, you can't do anything more. Actually, once you sign it, you're not allowed to do anything more. That's what we always say in class. Once you sign it, you're done. So here we have it. So then this after this afternoon, I mean from this evening and this afternoon, I don't, don't want to show you, but we have to, right, to show you the difference. So yeah, so there we go. This afternoon, the little the little horsey, <laughs> the little the little doggy, I should say. Um, it's just different, guys. It's just um, you can see. Look at the color in this one. Look at the less color in this one. Look at the values. Look at the colors. Look at the composition. How this one doesn't really fall together as well, you know, and, and it's all about, look at all this negative space, the space in here where there's nothing here. The negative space is enough to just show off your, the, the donkey and the flowers and all like that. All right. So until next week, always, always, um, sit there and post your things. If you, if you do do the painting, please show me, show me what you did on Becker art group on Facebook and um, have your friends subscribe and it's all free and it's all fun to do. Um, adding the post and the bucket made a great difference to the composition. Much more interesting. Thanks for the enjoyable, informative panel. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for watching guys. And we'll see you next week. And again, if you have an idea of what you want painted and there's something that I've never done or something that I just have left behind, let me know. Let me know. Let me know. And so until next week, guys, 